When it comes to video games, I've noticed a sort of pattern in recent years. A lot of games tend to, uh, get muddled in pointless mechanics, drag themselves out and grow into a seemingly endless mass of objectives until you kind of lose track of what you were trying to accomplish in the first place. <gasps> For brevity's sake, sometimes things are a little overdone. And, well, that's why I love the work that HAL Laboratory does. HAL Laboratory, formerly known as Halkin, is a pretty well-known partner of Nintendo. They make a lot of relatively simple games. Games I consider a sort of comfort food. Games like the Kirby series, Box Boy, the first two Smash games. Their sort of unofficial creed is making games that are simple to learn, but tricky to master. Oh, and they've also made people cry before, but... We're not talking about that, because I think one of their recent ventures encapsulates their creed more than almost any other game they've made. And that game is Part-Time UFO. Some people may know this as that silly mobile game that HAL made a few years ago, dismissing it under that label alone. But no, I think this game is something truly special. Is it a masterpiece? Well, no. Nothing on this show is, Perry. Are you ever satisfied? But its confidence in its mechanics and its adorable aesthetics make it a breed of game I thought had gone the way of the dodo. Part-Time UFO is a short, sweet experience that's polished to a shine and definitely worth your time. In order to discuss Part-Time UFO and how solid its mechanics are, we first need to discuss the origin of said mechanics. The Claw Machine, or Claw Game for short. Skill Cr- The Claw Machine is an age-old gambling method used to wriggle pocket change out of the masses. You slip a quarter into a machine and basically try to pull a prize out of a glass case with a claw. Now I know that sounds riveting, but here's the thing. Part-time UFO commits to this age-old mechanism as its central gameplay asset. And boy howdy does it do that well. Every level basically has you doing odd jobs for people in need. You pick things up with your claw, but instead of just pulling them out of places, you have to put them in a certain formation. Whether it be a stack, a structure, shoving things in a case, or just making a general pile of madness that should probably not be staying up, each level has its own unique spin on things. Heck, sometimes you gotta get things just right, and it can be a bit of a puzzler in that sense. Get your structure just right, make sure it doesn't topple over, and you can get that sweet cash money. If it topples over, uh, you get less cash money, but that's okay. Timeliness isn't all you're being accounted for. There's two other missions per level, so you can strive for those for bonus cash. These can range from finding hidden objects to getting a lot of a certain type of item in a stack. But what does a UFO need money for anyway? Well, there's a costume shop where you can buy cosmetics that can give you a slight advantage. Speed increases, a more firm grip with the claw, etc. And sometimes that's all you need, really. Sure, you can juggle multiple mechanics in a game, and that's impressive, I guess. Whatever. I sleep. But if you can not only lean on a small set of really solid mechanics, but utilize them in ways that make the core gameplay loop not get stale over the entirety of the game... Yeah. Inject that directly into my veins. Using nothing but a claw and its charms, Part-Time UFO creates something reminiscent of the retro age of gaming while not falling into the usual pitfalls of that era. But on the topic of charm, this game has a load of it. Sure, there's hardly any dialogue, only really seen in the intro and ending cutscenes, but the way the characters animate, the way they express emotion and just the general fluidity of it all is just, it's, God, it's clean. I love this sort of GBA DS type sprite work. I'm not entirely sure, not a pixel person, but I can definitely see this isn't an 8-bit or 16-bit type beat. Sure, there's some cues of it in the music, and believe me, we'll get to the music, but the game doesn't lean into it in its visuals. I love the way the sprite work allows for a lot of tiny details. There's some secret missions, as I previously mentioned, where you have to find something in the background and place it in the pile, and if the icon of said mission didn't give it away, the secrets are usually just distinct enough to pop out from the rest of the background. It's made in a way that even more lackadaisical eyes can piece it together. Oh fuck. And the character designs, god they're so adorable. Their exaggerated features and facial expressions can lead to some really fun interactions in the levels. When you're doing it right, you feel good about yourself. 
But man, you will feel like scum if you mess things up. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best! Part-time UFO just puts a hell of a lot of work into making its world, as small as it is, come off as charming as possible. And that's great. It feels like you're seeing the world through the eyes of Jobski, our little UFO. And yes, the UFO's name is canonically Jobski. I... <laughs> that, that speaks for itself. And this game's adorable, well-communicated style is also accentuated by the music that is just as adorable and just as well-communicated. Almost every song in this game uses the exact same leitmotif, but it spins it into different genres, giving it a new flair with each level type. There's a reason I led the video with said leitmotif. The main menu helps to familiarize you with the comfy whistle, this sort of supple melody that's easy to hum along to, before hitting you with the higher voices saying the Japanese title of the game. That's some cute stuff. But in your first level, the farm, it picks up the pace a little, accentuating the whistle with some extra country flair, making the song feel more jolly and busy. To contrast, in the later lab stages, the song becomes more eerie and ominous removing beats from the song to make it slightly more background noise than music. This really helps with the lab stages being a lot more puzzle-oriented than the other types. And in one of my favorites, the restaurant has this classy, chill feeling that just lets you feel really cozy. Despite the song sort of leaning into its snooty, upper-class type vibe, I feel like it still has a sense of fun about it, like the other songs do. It helps calm the mind when the pancakes just won't stack. Come on, I want the achievement! With the exception of some of the bonus content, every track leans into a leitmotif in a way that's really creative, meddling with it in various ways. I wouldn't expect anything less from Shogo Sakai, the composer behind Mother 3, Kirby Mass Attack, and Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Much like the art style and animation, the music comes together to help stack everything into a neat little pile of adorableness. That isn't everything, though. Part-time UFO on Switch is quite a bit more than just a simple mobile port. Besides the typical, you know, widescreen and co-op, which I don't have footage of because I have no friends near me. But there's a lot new. There's more costumes than before. There's a whole new type of job in the toy shop, which even has a cute little Kirby cameo. And even some extras for when you've done all you can in the main game. I've sunk a couple hours into Tower of Infinity, let me tell you. It's already challenging enough to stack things in the base levels, but Tower of Infinity, as the name implies, wants you to go as far as you can. And when the music starts changing from going high enough, heck, that is invigorating. It's good fun, although I wish there was slightly more object variety. I'd have way more hours in it in that case. And in a sort of post-game affair, there's Treasure Island. This one, this one's special. It takes full advantage of Part-Time UFO's new widescreen format and all of its mechanics by basically making a miniature dungeon full of treasure. Think the Great Cave Offensive from Kirby Superstar, but instead of being this two to three hour long epic, you can beat it in around 20-ish minutes if you know what you're doing. There's even a whole new boss battle with a Dick Dastardly type goon and his henchmen, complete with maybe my favorite track in the game. The way it takes all of the parts of the leitmotif and just piles them on top of each other to create this sense of urgency, twisting from this sort of jazzy type fight theme to a more orchestral and serious one, it's just, ah, it's so good! Sure, there's not really much new content, really just like, eh, 
an hour to two hours if you're not really feeling the infinite mode. But like, it feels so ingrained with what was already here that if I wasn't looking it up for the video, I would have just assumed it was there to begin with. I'm glad that three years later that this update didn't lose the charm that the base game had. And really, I think that sort of reflects across the whole game, if it wasn't obvious by what I said before. Part-time UFO just has this sort of purity in its simplicity. There I go again, quoting my video titles. But <laughs> for real, for such a tiny little game, it packs so much charm and ingenuity into it. And it's pretty cheap too. You can pick it up for under 10 bucks. Part-time UFO may not be like a enormous massive, inspiring game or anything, but it shows to me that HAL still has that creative, simplistic outlook on their games outside of Kirby. Definitely give it a try, you won't be disappointed. Perry, what was that? Are you are you trying to be like a marketer for for, for Nintendo's games now? <laughs>